Hello crafty friends, it's Donna here and I've got another one paper pack 10 cards video for you today. I'm going to be using sketches from Sandy Allnock's Operation Write Home sketch set and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we get going with the cards. The paper pack that I'm using today is called Butterfly Bliss and it has 18 sheets in the pack, three of each of these six double-sided papers and you can see them here. One of those pages has cut aparts on it and so the first thing I did was to cut apart one of those pages. I've also grabbed from my stash a bunch of papers that I may or may not use in coordinating colours but darker tones. Our first sketch today is Operation Write Home's sketch number one. These sketches have the measurements written on them for US size cards and that's what I'm using today. But later on in this series of videos, I'm thinking about looking at how to change those measurements for Australian and European papers if there's interest in that. Please leave a note in the comments if you'd like to see this. For pretty much every element in every card, I've backed it with a coordinating plain paper. I think that gives a nice clean look. As far as the measurements on the sketch goes, I have cut the larger background paper to the size written on the sketch and then cut my patterned paper to be slightly smaller than that. For this card, one of the cutouts was pretty much the exact size that I needed for that centre square and so I've used that. I've then added in a die cut butterfly. This one is called Dainty Butterfly Small from Paper Rose Studio and I've cut both layers. The back layer is cut from vellum and the front layer from the patterned paper. I've stuck most things down flat with whichever adhesive happened to be closest to my right hand at the time but I have used foam tape to give a little bit of dimension to that 3 by 3 inch square and also to the happy birthday sentiment. The next sketch, number 2 from the Operation Right Home sketches, is also a nice simple sketch only this time we're going to have to deal with a difference in height of the layers because one of the squares hangs off the side of that tall strip. So once again, I've used the measurements to cut my background papers in the dark blue. I've then cut my patterned paper an eighth of an inch smaller. If you're working in millimetres and that's what your cutter does, it's about three millimetres. That will give you one and a half millimetres around each side. Or if you're working in inches, that gives you one sixteenth of an inch around the outside of each piece a perfect tiny little border that doesn't distract from the papers but just breaks them up. In the case of that tall strip I've only added the extra on the sides and not the top and bottom. And then once again I'm going to stick the layers down with whichever adhesive happens to be right there. When it comes to sticking down that dark blue panel the height of the two sides is now different the left hand side is exactly two sheets of paper taller and so that's what I'm going to stick onto the back of this sheet. By putting down two sheets of paper I've managed to get the exact height and now everything will sit level when I glue it. I've used the same butterfly once again, this time cutting just the top layer. I just thought that the butterfly die and these papers were such a perfect match. And once again I've chosen one of those little cut apart sentiments, this time it says best wishes and I've popped the best wishes sentiment up with a tiny bit of foam tape. On to sketch number three. I've cut a strip of plain paper with three holes in it and then another strip of pattern paper to sit behind it. I've chosen to fussy cut some little butterflies but if fussy cutting isn't your thing you could use a circle die, add stickers or leave them blank. I lost a little bit of footage here thanks to overloading my phone so I've added an extra photo of the finished product so that you can see how I layered that up. This next sketch has such a beautiful big space on it that I wanted to highlight one of my favourite papers. I've chosen to ignore the little O detail at the top and just work with the rest of the sketch. Because the dark paper strips are only on the sides, rather than use a whole sheet of paper, I've just cut some little strips. But then my beautiful top paper is going to sag in the middle. And so while this may pen you to watch it, 
I'm going to cut up a failed stamp from a previous card and use that. I used one of the little cutter parts for that smaller rectangle and just cut the background paper to match it. Once again, I'm going to need to compensate for those two layers of paper and I stick down the sentiment. That feature panel is popped up with foam tape and so on the right hand side of my sentiment, I have used two sheets of paper and some foam tape so that the height is the same. Here's sketch number five. This one has a split panel going across and I thought that both sides of this paper here would make for a nice trio. Once I'd cut the pieces and laid them out, I decided that that pink sky didn't really work. But luckily I had a little piece left, and so I recut that right hand piece so that the blues were more prominent. So that they would look like a single panel, I used a piece of blue paper behind them, just to border them at the top and the bottom. And then I've used a layered Hello die from Paper Rose Studio. I've cut the top and the bottom layer from the patterned paper and the same blue that I used for the background, I've used for that middle layer. I recently found my T-square ruler, but I'm still not in the habit of using it. And so once again, I've used a piece of paper to find my right angle and line up the sentiment. I've added two butterflies just to join the layers together and to make the card flow from the sentiment up and through the panel. Sketch number six has a lovely set of four panels and I thought that this paper which has a border would work perfectly but I'm going to need to cut it down and so I made a little bit of a template to work out how the sizing would work. In the end, I cut as close as I dared to the outside of that pattern and then worked in from there, cutting the four corners and discarding the middle. And let's face it, by discarding, I mean using underneath to prop up some layers. The card sketches over at Operation Right Home are plentiful, to say the least. Initially, I thought there were 75 sketches, but then I realized there were actually 75 pages of sketches. I'm planning to slowly work my way through them using different paper pads. So the next video will include sketches 11 through 20. If you're interested on getting a heads up on that video, I'm going to use the Maisie's Garden paper pad, also from Paper Rose Studio. For the central panel, I've used one of the cutter parts that I cut up at the very start of this video, but it was a little bit small. And so I've added a second layer behind, once again, matching a patterned paper with some plain blue paper. This next sketch is a great one for using up all those leftover slices of paper and would be a great stash buster for all of those little bits of paper that we keep in a drawer somewhere. The five strips are layered up and then it's simply a matter of adding a feature panel. I've put a cut apart and a sentiment together on one background panel and then popped them up with foam tape. This was a really quick and easy card to make. We're on the home stretch now. I think actually cards 9 and 10 are my favourites. But first, card 8. We have a nice simple diagonal background. I've chosen to put my diagonal line in the opposite direction so that I can include all of the plant that you see on the paper that I'm cutting right now. Once they were cut, I've gone once again to that trusty butterfly die and I'm going to add a white circle as per the card sketch and then put the butterfly up on top of that. Once again, I've popped up the sentiment right in the middle of the butterfly with foam tape.
Sketch number 9 is a really simple sketch, but I've decided to bring a little bit of Copic colouring onto this card. I have the Georgia Floral Butterfly and I'm stamping that with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is alcohol marker friendly. To choose my colours, I held some of the different coloured pattern papers up to my Copic marker chart and chose some colours that were a really good match. And then I've coloured that butterfly off screen. Just for a change, I decided to stamp my sentiment and this one comes from a stamp set called Modern Poppies. I'm around, I've used VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it's a really deep, rich black and it gives me a good coverage. In the layering up process, the butterfly sticks out a little bit, top and bottom, from the layer below. So I've popped again two layers of paper behind those areas of that panel. Card number 10. This is a really sweet little sketch. I love the little tags. I have a tag die that turned out to be exactly the right size, but if you don't, then you can always cut a rectangle and then just snip off the two corners and don't worry too much about the hole. If you want to add string, you can always staple it on. By now I'd had enough of fussy cutting butterflies and so I used the lots and lots of butterfly die and just the very top butterfly. I wanted to make use of the whole pack and so I've cut those butterflies from the thick card that has the name of the pack on it. I stuck these on with glue, but if I did it again, I would actually use some tape because even though I used only a tiny bit, the vellum did threaten to curl up and I had to be quite firm with it. I also used the little rings at the top on each of the tags. In order to line all my butterflies up, because I was using vellum, I simply placed the tags on top of each other and looked through to the butterfly below so that they're all in exactly the same place. Because of that little bit of string, I wanted a tiny bit of dimension on the tags and so I've stuck a little piece of paper behind each butterfly and I cut one extra ring and used a third of it at the bottom of each of those rings on the back just so that the tag would sit to the height of that string that's behind it. I chose vellum because I loved that background paper so much and I didn't want to cover it up with tags. And for this final card, once again, the sentiment is one of those little cut parts. These cards are all going to be packaged up together to give as a gift. I think a matching set of cards is such a lovely gift. There's been a lot of information in today's video. I'm going to leave a link to the coordinating blog post which will have photos of each of the cards and as well as that I'll leave links below to all of the bits and pieces that were used today. Well done for sticking with me to the end and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye for now.